JavaScript comes equipped with one more stock dialog component called a prompt box, which we are going to engineer ourselves to obtain complete customization and control over the dialog windows within our custom software. The default prompt dialog box in JavaScript provides a single text field to the user so they can give you some value in order for your program to continue. But your custom prompt box can intake much more than that if you require it to. So since this is the third and final part of a three-part series, individuals who want to gain full understanding of the code that we're going to begin with in this tutorial could watch the two previous exercises where we initially created custom alert and confirm boxes because we're just going to extend that code to include prompt boxes. So we're starting with the same exact code that we left off with when we completed the previous lesson for creating custom confirm boxes. But we're going to be removing all of this HTML anyway. We're going to make sure that we leave our dialog box and dialog overlay in place on the page. And we're still including our dialog.css and dialog.js. And dialog.js already has the custom alert and custom confirm components inside of it. So what I'm going to do is minimize all of the existing code in that JavaScript file. And on the next line down, I'll pop in the custom prompt object. And this is what renders our custom prompt window. And I'm going to explain this code in depth in just a second. But once you get that into your dialog.js script, it'd be ready to use in any of your HTML files that are including this dialog.js. So you can use the alerts, the confirms, and the prompts. Now what I'm going to do in my HTML, I'm going to pop in an h1 element that's just a status element, just for this simple example. And really what I'm doing, what I'm doing to alter the page isn't really important. Okay, now I have a button whose on click event is going to call the prompt objects.render method, just like we called the render method for the alert and the confirm boxes in the previous tutorial. And this is going to get two parameters. The first parameter is the dialog that you want to show in the window to the user. And the second parameter is the name of the function that you want to execute once the user supplies the value into the prompt window and clicks OK. So naturally, my program would require a function. So let's put in a script element. Make sure we close that script element. And we're going to place function change text. And it's going to intake one value argument. So it'll have one incoming argument, which is the value from the text field in the prompt window. Now let's run this example.html and make sure our custom prompt object works. And then I'll explain to you the custom prompt object here. So let's run this example.html in our favorite browser. Click change text. And we see a prompt window pop up that says a value is required. Type some text so I can type in hello world okay and you can see that the inner HTML for the h1 element on the page changed to hello world now what I'm doing on the page is not important the real meat of this tutorial is to show how to pass some value that's taken in through this text field to a custom function that you have on the page so that's what we've done we have a custom function on the page that is not going to run this change text function isn't going to run until the user types some text into that field and presses OK. So it's important to keep that in mind. The change text or whatever custom function that you want to fire off, it doesn't run until the user gives some value in the prompt window and presses OK. And the field value for that little text field, the value is coming through in this argument. Now let's quickly discuss the dialog.js. You can see that our render method is just like it was for the alert and the confirm boxes. But this time we're putting different things in the inner HTML. So when prompt.render is called to run, remember we're passing two arguments. Those two arguments are being scooped up right here as dialog and func. Func is short for function name. So we take that dialog variable coming in and we put it here in the inner HTML for the dialog box body. Then directly under that in the dialog box body, inner HTML, we're going to append a text field. And you can see I gave that text field an ID of prompt value. And then we simply supply the two buttons that are needed, which is prompt.ok and prompt.cancel. 
and in the prompt.ok method you want to pass the function name which is the function that you want in your program that you want to fire off in our case it's change text whatever custom function in your program that you want to fire off that's the function name that you're going to pass here and it's coming through this render method dynamically so if the user presses cancel all you have to do is just remove the dialog window and do nothing in your program but if the user presses OK then you're going to pass that function name through the OK method here and what we're going to do is grab the prompt value 1 from that text field that's in the prompt window and we can easily do that by saying document.getElementById prompt value 1 text field dot value then we simply call the custom function that we want to run using this line and this might look a little foreign to some of you guys but basically you can run any function for instance in my program here I have a function called change text if I wanted to run that statically instead of dynamically here I can just put this in quotes like that and this will run the window change text function or really it targets the change text object of the window does that make sense? Because that's all it's doing, and it's passing one uh, parameter or one argument through that function, which is the prompt value one text field. So we'll make that dynamic again. So whatever function name is being passed, when you're telling your prompt to uh, open up, you see I'm passing change text here. That's the function that's going to be initiated when the user types in some value in the prompt window and presses OK and then after that function is initiated we simply remove the dialog window so it works pretty much just like the alert and confirm but this time we're using a more dynamic approach to run the function the desired function once the prompt is submit and if you want to understand more about how I'm targeting this function name dynamically and running the function and passing an argument through it in this foreign looking sort of way you can go to this URL at webintersect Dot com. I've started writing articles again at Web Intersect. And this article I wrote recently, I think I wrote it just last week, it was about dot notation versus brackets in JavaScript. And it'll show you all about how you can target any object or function or variable or whatever you want in your program by using bracket notation, which allows you... The, this article basically talks about how using bracket notation instead of dot notation in JavaScript allows you to use strings, dynamic strings, as the property or function names for objects in your in your software. So if you really want to understand this line, or if this line looks confusing at all, you can read this article, and it'll explain why we're using that kind of code. It just gives us the way to call that function to run and pass an argument to it dynamically without knowing the function name before our software is initiating the function. So if your software doesn't know the function name before it's supposed to initiate some function, it can take it in as a string dynamically. The function name can be a string coming in dynamically that the program can then make run. Now I've gone into dialog.js and made sure that there's only the custom objects and creating new instances of those custom objects. There's no custom functions in here. We have all the custom functions would be in your main file. So for the last tutorial, the confirm box, the delete post function would be here in your main file. In dialog.js, you really just want to store the custom objects for the dialog windows and creating new instances for those. And you don't even have to even create the new instance here. You can take these lines out of here where you're creating new instances of those objects and put them in your main file. That way you're not creating new instances of objects unless your main file absolutely needs them. So what I did here is I put a new function called do stuff. And I put a new button just to show you how the prompt box will render dynamically for as many prompts as you need to have on the page. And in do stuff, I'm just going to take this line here from change text and I'm going to target the body. So let's say document.body.style.background is going to be equal to value. And I'll change this text down here to type a color name. Now this prompt is going to run the do stuff custom function here. This prompt is going to run the change text custom function. Now let's see if that works. Let's go to do stuff. This should change the color of the background. So let's put pink. OK. And it changed the background of the web page to pink. Now let's change the text. OK. And now we have hello world change text. We can change the background again to turquoise or any color we want. 
So that shows you the prompt boxes running dynamically. And remember, your custom functions don't fire off until the user supplies the prompt value. All right, so that's one approach to creating your own custom prompt boxes from scratch. And they can be made very dynamic the way we made them. And they can be externalized as modules that you can just pop into certain pages that are going to need them. If a certain page does not require any dialog windows, then it shouldn't include those JavaScript and CSS files.